What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Let's Play West of Loathing with Dog and Pony. I'm Dog and Pony. This is West of Loathing. We're going to continue the story, if you don't remember. It's about, you know, Shaggy Dog Cave and the first expedition into it, or at least the first documented expedition into it, and that's the documents that we're reading. Go back to the last episode, if you didn't know that. Or if you want a refresher. Here's a plaque bolted. There's a plaque bolted to the cave wall here. That's what they all say. All right, soon we came to the end of the tunnel while Nate, Cy, and Doug took turns with the excavation. I completed the last of the aforementioned, aforementioned plaques. It was a matter of perhaps an hour before Cy's shovel struck a wooden surface with a hollow noise. And we hauled a traditionally styled treasure chest out of the hole with great excitement. The chest was locked with an ancient and rusting iron... If he finished the last of them, how did he know... Um, okay, the timeline on this uh, the timeline on this is all screwy. I don't know what's going on, but I'm just going to take it at face value. The chest was locked with an ancient and rusting iron padlock, which broke easily from a single swing of our pickaxe. We opened it. We opened the lid slowly, and the flickering light of the antique oil lamp shone brightly, brilliantly upon jewels of every color. So this is uh making me suspect a little bit more. I kind of in the back of my mind I was wondering are these the people that were involved in that Tontine? And is this where our maybe or maybe not anagram is going to come in handy? We'll see. Um, on jewels of every color and shining ingots of precious metals, just as promised by the legends of Black Cole Jr. Joyous at our tri- Oh. Ju the period after Jr. had me thinking that was still the same sentence. It Ambiguities of written language there, just as promised by the legends of Black Coal Jr. Joyous at our triumph, we loaded the chest into our wagon and, the, and began the journey home. Thank you for reading, and may your own endeavors be equally successful. Signed, Jim Plackright. It's a hole, a completely empty one. Okay. So now we gotta walk all the way back. We were pretty close to the end when we started this episode. Like two minutes away, I guess. Wasn't there a, a door at the beginning of the cave? Another way to go? It said like the, the cave didn't fork at all, but I feel like it does. Right at the beginning. Which is probably about to be here, I hope. I read a lot of- Hey! Is that just the exit? This is just the exit. Alice comes in, which isn't always normal. The aristocrats! What? Heh. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, okay. Uh, am I forgetting about anything? Alice reminds you that those nuns in the old mission above their submission catacombs still need help retrieving their relics. Okay. Oh, actually, I wanted to keep going. I want to find out what we're supposed to bribe that one goblin with. Roy Bean wants you to recover his stolen jelly beans from the goblin living in the giant cat. That's what we're trying to get. Um, so she probably doesn't know what we're trying to bribe him with. Alice points out we've got enough scrap for the professor, professor to do whatever he wanted to do with it now. Oh. Who's the professor? I vaguely recall this, but I don't know where he is. Scrap. Old Schmaltz Brewery. I'm not going to read these all out loud, but I'm going to read them all in my head. Ford All Dead. Jumble Neck Mine. Um. Chuck's House. Breadwood Old Mission. We could go to the Old Mission. That's something. We needed to recover relics. I don't remember where they are. Reboot Hill. Baker Boys Hideout. Where is... Oh, the professor's house. I'm glad I did that. We have enough scrap for him. Whatever he wants to do with it, we will find out. Maybe he'll make us a stuffed animal. What do you think of this guy, Doc? He seems all right, I suppose. Got a, got kind of a st strange hobby. Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll talk to him. 
Good to see you again. Have you got those five piles of scrap yet? Yep, got them right here. Great, let me just, hmm, mm-hmm. Yep, okay, this will do the trick. Let me just get this running and then you'll be able to grab a keystone from it. It'll take another five scrap for each one you need. Are you familiar with the Lost Dutch Oven Mine? <laughs> uh, Grim Place, but that's where I found the chassis for the fabric for that fabricator wedged behind an unusual pile of rocks. Seems like a good place to start hunting. Lost Dutch Oven Mine, all right, I'm on it. Yeah, sure. Hmm. I was not expecting there to be a location there. I'm still expecting more around where the shaggy dog place was. Oh, yeah, buddy. More scrap that we apparently don't need. Ah, uh, yeah, just shoot it. We did like twice its remaining health. Yay. I'm sure the scrap doesn't, I mean, we could still get more with it. More keystones. Whoa, whoa, those are some stinky fishers. I can't get any closer, not without some stench resistance at least. Stench resistance at least. Well. This doesn't give me, oh no, okay. I think, sweet smelling flowers. What does the worry stone do? Fix moxie. Still worth using that after, but we need this to get in. Oh, okay. Loot him. A gas mask, miner's pants. Eh, could have used this five minutes ago. Well, maybe we still can, eventually. The miners must have eaten down here to avoid the stench upstairs. Grab what's left. I don't know what kind of tobacco these miners are chewing, but it must be extra corrosive. I thought we were done with these. Because this brass spittoon has a hole eaten through it. Eaten through the bottom and dark stains underneath it where the spit leaked out although oddly it doesn't seem to be leaking now and it's half full i guess the miners plugged the hole with something i'm not looking forward to this it's a spittoon it's disgusting you could practically practically see the stink lines coming off it come on let's not do this inspect it i'm gonna drink some water first <sighs> all right don't throw up ah oh, geez fine okay you crouch down and take a careful look at the filthy spittoon. The inside is blackened with the year's worth of stains. The death broth inside has a rainbow sheen like it's a part like a parking lot oil spill. And occasionally a little bubble pops on the surface. You can actually feel a slight warmth radiating off of it from whatever dire chemical reaction is taking place in there. You realize you're holding your breath, not deliberately, but from the human body's natural instinct for self-preservation. Inhale. Imagine someone made a big pot of chili con carne, left it under their porch, and, and left it under the porch. These three rats crawl into the pot, eat half of the chili, and then die. A week later, a family of cro cockroaches takes up residence among the writhing maggots. The cockroaches smoke thick black cigars, which they then light with, which they light with tufts of burning human hair. This is what it smells like. That is what it smells like. Search it. Fortunately for you, the rainbow-colored film on the surface of the liquid coats your hand as you plunge it into the toxic stew, keeping it from being immediately dissolved down to the bones. The smell intensifies, and your stomach prepares to hose po the poisons off of your arm with a high-pressure stream of vomit. Keep searching. Your fingers touch it. Uh, your fingers touch something at the bottom of the spittoon. Better pull it out fast while you still have something to pull with. Pull. Whew. You pull the world's most disgusting pair of pants out of the bottom of, sp of the spittoon and jump back as the hole at the spittoon's bottom, now unplugged, begins to, s to leak steaming filth. Congratulations, you're now the proud owner of the wor worst object I've ever paid, I've ever been paid to think about, narrowly defeating a leather bondage harness made from the skin of a clown. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay, hooray. Yep. Crowbar. Sulfur match and a can of kerosene. This one's already been picked over. This card is empty. Elevator. This elevator has a lot of stuff wrong with it. Hit the problems. You hit the elevator in all the right places, write it down. Oh, there we go. I was wondering what was going on there. You emerge from the elevator into a deeper shaft. By the light of your lantern, you see the exposed meat veins on nearly every surface. It's unusual that there would be this much readily available meat left in a working mine. What were they digging for, if not this? 
curious. Pick it. Pick it. Uh-oh. This is creepy. This guy is totally out of it. He's gibbering and drooling and doesn't seem to even notice you. Try to talk to him. Hey, buddy, are you okay? Blah, 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 blah. Bibble, birdo, gordo, glob. Uh-huh. You wave your hand in front of his face, but he doesn't seem to react at all. He doesn't react at all. Not even a seam. Just, he doesn't. Broken pickaxe. One of the miners digging with his helmet. Okay. Uh-oh. Spooky. No more meat veins? We got an okay amount of meat. And some unrefined, unrefined stuff. Ooh, this gem is pretty, but it smells terrible. Extract it. Effluvious emerald. The finger bones are all splintered. The hair on the back of your neck stands up. This guy seems to have gnawed off his own hands before he died. Your heart is pounding. This guy worked his fingers to the bone digging and worked his bones to the marrow. You have to get out of this pit right now. These, the scratches are just... These scratches are just painted on. In blood, you have to get out of this pit right now. These gouges are dark with blood. You have to get out of this pit right now. As you get near the rocks, the voices in your head begin screaming too loudly to ignore. You have to get out of this pit right now. Fine, fine. Um. Okay. Though I do have an idea. This is a somewhat helmet-shaped device made out of elbow bottom material, and when you see a somewhat thing-shaped device, your instinct is always to use it as that thing. And then we also had an... Oh no, we had the uh, headband, but we... We took it apart. What am I wearing? The cultist leader mask? Why am I wearing that? Because it gives me eight mysticality. Okay. I'll try to remember that. Can we do this? We might need like a full outfit. Yes! This pile is pretty obviously made on purpose. Closer inspection reveals that the stones are mortared together. I'm so good at this game. What could be hidden here? Bust up the pile. Move the rocks by hand. Magic the rocks away. Talk the rocks into leaving. I think these are all gonna give us the same result. So let's just bust up the pile. Pick, pick, pick. It was the right job. It was the right tool for the job. It, there's a trapezoidal piece missing from this weird crossbar thing. That's all we know. Okay. Do we still get the you have to get out message? Yeah. We do. It's not here. Okay. Thank you, El Vibrato Helmet. We have not yet found our trapezoidal piece, apparently, or else it would prompt us to use it. So that's something to look out for and try to remember to come back here with it. We're leaving this whole location, so we could just travel, but we're not going to. We're going to walk. It's good exercise. All right. How good is... The gas mask, 15% stench resistance. This thing, oh, it subtracts a lot of your stuff. Um, it's the same as this, but we can get up to 30% now if we need to, and that's good to know. We don't cast spells. So let's put this back on for now. Even though you might be saying, but that also just helps you with spells. It's mysticality. Yeah, but it's also, you know, other stat checks just in case. Um... Let's go talk to the professor again. Let him know what we found. Maybe he'll know about this trapezoid. The professor is examining something with intense concentration. Do you know anything about ley lines? I don't know much with that mystical mumbo jumbo. It's very unscientific. But it does come up in my research from time to time, so I can give you a basic overview. He draws some curved intersecting lines on a piece of paper and explains how they relate to local geography and so-called mystical forces. Most of it goes over your head, but you think you got the basics. You got an item, ley line diagram. Thanks. Anything else? Leave him alone. 
pop this open. This is an illustration of the basic principles of lay geography. It's simple enough to be understood by a layman. The layman ley line diagram. Use it. This diagram is surprisingly comprehensible. You stick it in your necromancer journal. I should check that out. You bet. Cause now we might. Yes. You get, um. Using I missed this one. It's way up higher. I thought it would just go in order, but using your leyline diagram, you narrow the location of the necromancer's lair down to a handful of possible locations based on the unseen currents of energy that riddle the land. You discover a new map location, necromancer's tower. Huzzah! You found a note. Yeah, I know the password. So let's go. Let's go to that. Sounds really interesting, at the very least. It is by Hellstrom Ranch. I don't think we could have gotten there just by wandering. I think we did need to complete the journal. There is a deep, gravelly exhalation of breath behind you, and you realize that you've been ambushed by a hell cow. Big one, too. Let's fight. So good. And guaranteed kill with a single shot. 197 meat, that's not bad. Tainted beefsteak, smoldering leather. We don't have the knife equipped, but we still used it. So I'm thinking we didn't have to be using it all this time. Let's see what Alice has to say. Well, Doc, it's time to sort this necromancer out once and for all. Are you ready for this? I'm taking a break from my Hippocratic Oath for a spell. Alice cocks her shotgun. Let's go do some harm. Hell yeah. Same deal here, just burnt cactuses. We can't really interact with any of them. <laughs> the skull above the door screams, password? Abracadaver. There's a click inside the door as it unlocks. Go in. I think we're capable. Some strange undecipherable runes. I bet they're not undecipherable if we had read the books and stuff. It's a fountain of blood, nothing weird about that. Oh my god. Drink? It's a fountain of blood, nothing weird. The blood is delicious, like meaty Kool-Aid. You gain an effect, dark blooded. Let's check that out. Where is it? Oh, it's an effect. Not a perk. Hmm. Well, I don't know how to check that out, actually. Well then. You're definitely not getting past those these guys without a fight. Let's dive in. Wowza. Yeah, you, you do that. Um, how much damage do I do to you? 38 to 42. I'm going to aim at you. We should check out all their health. 165, 7... Yeah, 148. They're all in the hundreds. In the like 120 to 160 range or so. But let's aim at this guy and fan hammer him. So we can do that. Alice is going to bone saw the healthiest one, which is going to be 153, 167. Bone saw, do it. Perfect. Such a long animation. But it does 100% damage, so I guess we can't complain. We're gonna die, aren't we? Well then. Well then. I'm angry. We get so angry that we pass out. All right, let's mosey. I gotta be honest. Oh, day eight, did you have a good first week? That's cute. Uh. I didn't expect to lose that. That's the honesty. Oh. What's this? Nice view from up here. Use your binoculars. You can just barely make out the entrance to a nearby mine. You discovered a new map location, Snake Pit Mine. You pitch the binoculars in a nearby trash can. Right, because they're disposable. New inventory item. Smoldering. Okay, yeah, this is just the stuff we found. I don't think we're currently capable of doing that fight. So we're going to go to Snake Pit Mine instead. 
also in the area that I thought a lot of locations would be. We probably got like two to three more in here. You notice the trails of burnt vegetation off the side of the trail, which can only mean one thing, a hellcalf is grazing nearby. Let's track it down. We're still trying to get to a thousand experience so we can boost our horn swoggling, so we can, yeah, just shoot it. Um, finish the train mission. Yeah, we did not need to have that knife equipped this whole time. Oh well. Nice. You look at the mining equipment, you have no idea what any of it does. Ask Alice to explain it to you. Hey Alice, do you know any of this, how any of this stuff works? Nope. Well, okay then. Explain it to Alice. Hey Alice, what? Just wanted to tell you about this mining stuff. Um, okay. So this first machine here, this is an automatic slate blaster. Alice stares at you blankly. Move on to the next machine. And this thing over here, this is this thing is used to extract creeded shale, black backfill, or loose deposit. Loose deposit. And then dredge it, smelt it, bifurcate it. Definitely bifurcate it, obviously. Alice size, keep going. And this third machine, this is an adulterated meat conveyor, a brittle fuel divider, an angular sandstone presser. Definitely an adulterated meat conveyor. It converts silver into fractured sulfur, gold into unrefined ash, um, <laughs> gold into unrefined ash, rubble into metaphoric rock. Definitely three. I like it. Uh, you got a you got a perk mind splainer. Alice rolls her eyes. Are you finished? Yes. Oh, it's these machines. All three of these machines. I wonder if we could have gotten that correct and gotten a different thing instead. They like gotten a better perk out of that. Speaking of. You're a real expert. You'll gain XP when you interact with mining stuff. Oh, that doesn't seem bad. Pile of loose boards. Build a crate. It's a crate, presumably full of mining supplies. I mean, you should know that. You built it. Open it. Can of kerosene and some dynamite. I really like that interaction. You can see a snake coiled up in the little hole. Pull it out and punch it. We're actually not gonna punch it. We're gonna shoot it. So is he. This is a really early location. You could tell by how easy everything is. Hooray. This card is overflowing with rubble. Dig through it. 72 meat and five XP. Mine's planning bonus. There's a smoking snake in this smoking hole. Pull it out. Wow. Nice particle effects. Okay. You collect two medicine from the snake's roasted kidneys, and you skin it. All right. A cache of mining supplies. Open it. Sulfur match, smelling salts, can of oil, and a caged canary. Ooh. What does that do? 20% spooky resistance. It's an offhand item. It's hard to be scared of anything with this little guy always chirping a cheerful tune. How oh, nice. This den is full of snake eggs. Pull them out. <laughs> wow. Uh, I'm gonna fan hammer so we can hit two. What is going on here? Just shoot. They all have one HP. Nice work dispatching those snakes. 30 XP, 77 meat. You grab the rest of the eggs from the den and shove them into your briefcase. Soon they'll hatch and feel right at home. Plus three venom. That's not enough skin on, there's not enough skin on any of them to be worth collecting. Hooray. How close are we to a thousand? Only 300 away, that's not bad. Somebody left their pick here. Pick it up. Unrefined meat, 42 meat. And 15 XP, mine's planning bonus. I wonder how much more XP we'd have if we had gotten that at the beginning of the game instead of when we've already gotten like the two end game locations. Wow, way to go, me. I guess we could keep wandering. We definitely need to get a little better at stuff before we're gonna... Beautiful. 
before we're going to be able to uh, beat the Necromancer, and we still don't have a stuffed animal or enough experience to get Hornswoggling. We should wait. We should get Hornswoggling as soon as we can, and then wait to go back to the train until we have a stuffed animal, if I remember, which I won't. You discovered a new map location, the Stearns Ranch. Go there now. Wow. Needles. All I've ever wanted. Not all the needles I've ever wanted, but needles are all I've ever wanted. Open it up. We got a lock and a bar of soap. Ooh, between the smoke and the noise, you're guessing that the contents of this outhouse are more dangerous than average outhouse contents. Open the door. We got the jump on him this time. This is another really early game location that we just never went to, I guess. Ooh. The outhouse is now safe as houses. Outhouses. Sure. You gain 10 XP. By the soft light of the fading embers, you see a glint of light from below. You hold your nose and with one hand, with one hand, as you fish out your prize with the other, toilet pistol. Hooray! That's probably a less good version of like my befouled pistol. You will stench damage instead of physical, plus six moxie. This is, you will stench damage instead of physical, apply five poison to enemy. But it's only 3 to 4 damage, whereas this is 13 to 17, so the 5 poison actually doesn't do anywhere near as much damage as just using the bullets from this. Mary Stearns, February 18th, 1894. This flower is smoking. Pick it. Smoking chrysanthemum. Gwendolyn Stearns, devoted mother, 1895. Jethro Stearns, devoted father, dot... This... They're only called the Sterns for this joke, I guarantee it. Because a stern is part of a ship, and so is a hull, and Jethro hull sounds like Jethro Tull. It's a stretch, but I firmly believe that. Looks like Jethro's bones were dug up by some varmint or other. Search him. He found a charred locket among the blackened bones. You got an item, charred locket. This, uh, you should call it a lucket, on account of how lucky, how, how it was lucky to escape that fire. I will not, but I will examine it. Let me drink some water real quick. The lock on this locket reminds you why they call it a locket. Pick the locket lock with a needle. Carefully pick the locket lock. You got an item, picture of Mary Stearns. Okay. Oh, it's a lapel item. Okay. Um, a faded daguerreotype of a girl. I don't know what that word is. The, the name Mary is written on the back. Examine it. It's a photograph of a serious looking little girl. On the back is written Mary Stearns Thanksgiving, 1894. Sad. Because, whoa, as you approach the grave marker, the hair on the back of your neck stands up as a voice whispers in your ear. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give what to you? The air grows colder. The picture. The picture of me. I can see it. You have it. You shouldn't look at it. Nobody should look at it. I guess you must be Mary. Why don't you want anyone to look at it? The whispering gets quieter. Anger seeps in around the edges of the voices because they'll know. Give it to me. Know what? What happened? What I did? Give me the picture. Give it to me now. She sounds pretty serious. Keep the picture. We got the jump on him this time. I want to keep the picture. I think. Poor girl. You hope she finds some peace. You tear up her picture and scatter. No! I should have given it to her. I didn't like that. I thought I'd get something out of that. It's a lockbox. True to its name, it's locked. Pick the... Oh, a stock certificate. We're gonna own so much stock. There are still some beans in this pot. Grab them. What did she do? All the books on this shelf are burned, but you notice something strange about the back of the shelf. Investigate. There's a book inside. Mary Stern's diary. We probably should have done all of this first. So the toy box contains a single object, a creepy, burnt porcelain doll. Talk to it. It's the work of a moment... Of a moment to fix the doll's voice box, pull the string. Oh god, this is gonna be creepy. 
You pull the string. The doll's eyes roll back into its head and its mouth begins to move. Hi, I'm Grace. What's your name? Well, if you want to find out what happens next, you'll have to tune in next time because that is all for now. But thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click that like button, subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you in the next episode where we'll continue this really creepy interaction.